Hello and welcome to a presentation on learning time-optimized path tracking in joint space with or without sensory feedback. This research was conducted by Jonas Kiemel and Thorsten Kröger at Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. In our work, we aim to address the problem of following a reference path defined in joint space as fast as possible and also as accurate as possible while considering the kinematic limits of the robot joints. More specifically, we consider bounds on the position, velocity, acceleration and on the jerk of each robot joint. On the right side, you can see an example with an industrial robot where the green line represents the reference path and the red line represents the generated path. Our technique can also be applied to dual arm systems like the humanoid robot shown in this video. To generate trajectories, we train a neural network using reinforcement learning. At each time step, the neural network receives the current position, velocity and acceleration of each robot joint, as well as a fixed number of upcoming waypoints describing the following part of the reference path. Given this input, the network outputs an action that is used to compute joint accelerations. These joint accelerations are saved in the sense that the specified kinematic limits are never violated. Compared to offline methods for time-optimal path parameterization, our method offers the advantage that the reference path can be adjusted during motion execution. And also allows us to consider sensory feedback, for instance to balance a ball on a plate or to keep a bipedal humanoid in balance. Based on the example of balancing a ball, the following figure shows how all system components work together. At time step t, the state st is given to the neural network, outputting an action at. Using this action, a trajectory is generated and executed, leading to the state st plus 1. Depending on the performance of the selected action, a reward is computed which is then used to train the neural network using a reinforcement learning algorithm called PPO. In the following, further details on the action generation and the reward calculation are provided. Each action is composed of one scalar in the range of minus 1 to 1 per robot joint. In order to ensure compliance with the kinematic joint limits, we compute for each joint a continuous range of acceleration set points that never leads to the violation of kinematic joint limits. The scalar provided by the neural network is then mapped along this range, which is shown in red in the following figure. If, for example, the selected scalar is zero, the desired acceleration at the beginning of the following time step is said to be in the middle of the feasible range. If the scalar is 1, the highest feasible acceleration is selected. Our reward function reflects the trade-off between the traversing speed, the tracking accuracy and additional objectives like balancing. A high traversing speed is encouraged by rewarding the length of the path generated by the last action. The tracking accuracy is influenced by a penalty considering the deviation between the generated path and the reference path. In the case of the ball and play task, the balancing performance is additionally reported based on the distance between the ball and the center of the board. In order to train our neural networks, we need to generate a dataset of reference paths first. One option to do so is shown in the video on the left side. To generate a wide range of potential reference paths, we select random actions at each decision step and add the resulting path to our dataset. The video on the right side visualizes the whole dataset, showing that the full workspace of the robot is covered by the randomly generated reference path. Considering that robots in industrial applications typically do not move randomly, we also evaluate our method on a second dataset generated by computing collision-free trajectories between randomly sampled target points. 
In case of the data set generated from random actions, the mean Cartesian deviation between the n effector and the reference path was 3.3 cm. Compared to the time optimal solution computed with an offline technique, the traversing time increased by 27%. Similar results were obtained for the target point dataset. As a next step, we evaluated whether a network trained on random paths can also be applied to reference paths from the target point dataset. On average, the mean deviation with the network trained on random paths was slightly higher, but the traversing time was slightly lower. In general, the obtained performance was very similar, demonstrating the generalization ability of the neural network. For the ball and play task, the use of sensory feedback reduced the percentage of unsuccessful episodes from 100% to 0.3%. In case of the bipedal humanoid robot, Controlling the legs using sensory feedback helped to reduce the balancing error to 0.8%. While we trained our networks in a simulation environment, it is possible to directly transfer the resulting policies to a real robot. Our action space ensures that the kinematic joint limits are never violated, even if the sensory feedback received during real-time execution is subject to disturbances and noise. If you are interested in using our work, you can find the code and the networks used for our evaluation on GitHub. I hope you enjoyed the presentation, thank you for your time and goodbye.